What's your name, man? You new and upcoming, but you're at this summit. What's your name? Where you from? My name Nipsey Hussle. I'm from L.A., Slots and Crenshaw area. What really, really made me start rapping is I, I, I was watching all the stars and it wasn't no niggas from my side of town. Feeling like I had a little something to say. This man's legacy is going to live on like somebody in the Bible. Even though we're from underprivileged communities, he is someone who put our community on the map. three-year-old was shot multiple times outside of his clothing store. The late great neighborhood Nip. Thousands of fans of community activist Nipsey Hussle are in a state of shock today. I was a childhood friend. I've been knowing him all my life. This is not going to be a good outcome for our community. The news of Nipsey's murder was broadcast around the world, but the killing didn't make any sense. Who would want Nipsey dead? Many conspiracies. A lot of people think LA police had to do something about it. This story would take me to the extremes of conspiracy. They'll hire one of us to kill one of us just to say it was one of us. And to the complicated codes of these streets. Do all gang members have to kill somebody? Hell yeah. It ain't no, hey, let me get a handshake. Let me... Nah, man. Bah, bah. But getting to the truth of Nipsey's murder was going to be far more complicated than I'd ever imagined. Whenever you don't fall in line, whenever you don't follow authority, you die. This is where Nipsey grew up, Crenshaw and Slauson. It's officially been renamed Nipsey Hustle Square. The area struggles with violent crime, and in the last six months, there have been eight murders, all within two miles of where Nipsey was killed. This is crazy. The whole area has now become a permanent vigil for Nipsey. How you doing, man? You all right? Attracting hundreds of visitors on a daily basis. I'd arranged to meet one of Nipsey's How old friends, you, Kenyatta Griggs. Good, thank you so much. Nice to see you. Kenyatta grew up around here and saw Nipsey grow from a teenager in a gang. What did he know about his murder? How did you feel when you heard the news that he had passed away? Horribly. He wasn't like a guy that was, you know, causing problems or looking for problems. And then when I saw the footage, it really hurt because I was actually shot like that. You know, I was gunned down like that, really? so, yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem to make sense. You know, he was so respected, so much love for him here. Like, right. How could that have happened? Well, I always thought as many people love you is it's gonna be equally as many people hate you. And so I always felt like him coming over here and being over here was a good thing to a point but there's, there's times I felt like it was unsafe because it's like me right now. I feel comfortable right here, but at the same time, I'm not hanging out over here. You know, there's still people that still gangbanging, still doing stuff that, you know, they want to hurt people. Nipsey was part of the local gang, the Roland 60s Crips. Kid, he was always a bit different. His dad was East African from Eritrea. Nipsey visited his dad's homeland numerous times, and his first trip when he was 18 changed him forever. It was profound going over there. It was it made a huge impact. I was different. It's me before I went, and it's me after I came back. I think it led to me making decisions that brought me into music and brought me into being more aware, you know what I'm saying, and more conscious of my decisions. Nipsey went on to own this whole row of shops. He owned a record label and the rights to his own music. 
He clocked 1.8 billion music streams in one year and became an icon for empowerment around the world. When you're ready. A huge part of the reason why people felt attached to Nipsey was, hey, as black people, we need to be building our stuff. We shouldn't be so dependent on white entities to survive. Also about encouraging us to join him. That's what all of his music was. Join me in this. This is, this is a big fight. And it let's, let's own our communities. Nipsey had an old school mentality in that he stood for patience. He knew that if I'm true to what I'm about, if I stay on the message that I'm sending, if I stay you know, where I grew up, I will achieve those things that I want to achieve. And that, I think, is what resonated with everyone. One of the things that Nipsey Hussle was trying to do was to show that although, yes, gangs do exist, that that area is rich in culture, that that area is rich in diversity, that that area is rich in intelligence, and it's not just um, an area that's focused on violence. Nipsey made his name here on this very street, selling his own CDs. But this street is now known for something much darker. So this is where he was shot, right outside his store, the Marathon Clothing Store. Can I buy a CD? Yeah. How, how much are we talking? Whatever you say. Oh, what's up? I'll give you this one after my whole thing, CD. Nipsey's Plaza was the most popular place to hang out in the area, but it's been locked off to the public in the last few months. Do you know why it's closed? Somebody that didn't want this to be here got what they wanted. Now we don't have nothing. I mean, you think there's something sinister behind his killing? I think it's something sinister in the whole music industry. And I think it's done on purpose. But why would they want Nipsey to not be here? Because you making people smart is what I'm trying to say. You got most of music going, shake your ass, be a prostitute, do drugs, kill people. Then you got Nipsey over here talking about being an entrepreneur and a businessman. Nipsey's death got a lot of media attention. Hundreds of stunned fans gather on Slauson Avenue, standing a few feet away from the strip mall where rapper Nipsey Hussle was gunned down. a vigil took place. Hundreds from the community paid tribute to him. It, it's, it's seriously heartbreaking to, to hear this. Very quickly, rumors started spreading on the motive behind his murder. He almost had to cure for AIDS, a lot of stuff going on that people don't really know. And that definitely was jealousy. That was a situation where somebody felt like they got disrespected. It was personal. You know what I mean? It's only within the neighborhood, only we know. Across the world, thousands of people started speculating on the cause of Nipsey's death. 
Someone even claimed on social media that they were the killer. I shot Nipsey Hussle. Get out to make money. I shot Nipsey Hussle. Come get me, nigga. I shot him. Bro, you did not shoot Nipsey, fool. But it turned out to be false. And amidst the madness, this video of Nipsey's friend was widely shared online. I was a childhood friend. I've been knowing him all my life. He was like family to me. He cared about us. I care about him. The video is of Marquisha Lawson. But it wasn't being shared to show sympathy for her. People were instead using it to suggest that she had some kind of involvement in Nipsey's death. What was going on? Once that interview was over, you can clearly hear her say in the background, can you cut that? I can't pretend, I can't fake it. Why would she be pretending and faking it if this really just happened? So pe know. people actually thought you had something yes. to do with this murder? Yes. They were coming for me every day. Based on what? Um, based on lies. People assumed I was a crisis actor, that the news hired me, um, that I was a fake. And the lies are that you set him up somehow? Um, right? That I, I set him up. I knew the, the gunner. People were telling me they hope I die. Um, All these stories, so negative. Why, the, why, why would they say you set him up? I, I don't know. Because if anybody knows that's from LA, you can't just walk up on somebody in their own neighborhood and shoot because normally you would get shot back, you know? So someone had to be super comfortable to know his whereabouts, to know he had no security, he was by himself. They had to be, it had to be like an inside type of thing. Was the alleged killer really an insider like Marquisha was telling me? So far, the police say there's only one suspect. We have identified the person believed to be responsible for this devastating crime. He is 29-year-old Eric Holder. By this point, Eric Holder is in police custody awaiting trial for the murder of Nipsey Hussle. Bail currently is set at $5 million. Did you wish to be heard as to bail today, Mr. Darden? No, Your Honor. But I'd found out something surprising. Eric and Nipsey were from the same gang. Why would someone from the same gang want to kill him? I need to find out more about Eric Holder. I've found his address on the internet. I'm a little bit worried about how people might react to us asking about Eric Holder because he is the most hated man in Los Angeles. Like, mentioning his name, it's like Voldemort or something. Like, people just will not talk, act all weird about it. So it's that with the blue shutters. Someone's just came out the building, so... We're trying to find out a bit like someone who knew Eric Holder. Did you meet him? I uh, did. It was very, very little, but it was like, hey, how's it going? This guy's gonna shout to us. This guy looks angry. Hey, uh, I find this really odd, OK? I don't mean to be... No, no, we understand. I don't we to totally be negative, understand. But yeah, you're not are being you guys difficult. Reporters, look, we don't want to answer any questions for any news people for anything, okay? And I think he agrees. My neighbors probably agree. The neighbors had told me off camera that they were too scared to talk. Eric was a gang member after all. But I left my number with them. Eric Holder is pleading not guilty. On behalf of your client, enter a not guilty plea on his behalf. But he is the only suspect. I want to know what he was doing on the day Nipsey was killed. I finally get a call back from one of the neighbors I'd met earlier at Eric's house. It turns out, he spoke to him just hours before the shooting. Hello. What was he like as a person? 
he seemed like a, a normal person. Like a kid at one point who was working in a restaurant. And, you know, it seemed like he was doing okay. And what did he tell you about his life? What? Well, he's a rapper, and, you know, he played some of his music. The lyrics aren't anything I particularly care for, but, you know, I listened, and, and I heard the music and his talent, and I said, oh, good, you know, I tried to be nice. So can you tell me what exactly happened that day? Uh, we were sitting in the apartment, and I was on the phone, and Eric came by and knocked on my door. And I... I say, hey, what's up? And he said, can I talk to you for a minute? And as I'm walking toward him, I could see he was like getting himself psyched. He uh, falsely accused me. He said that I put drugs and marijuana, I sold him. And he said it loud, like unusually loud. Yeah, I said, what are you talking about? I would never do something like that. I'm like, why is he doing this? Is he trying to set me up? Who knows if he had Nipsey premeditated. Well, I don't like know, say, but I, saying he did it all because of some crazy drugs that he had taken. That, right. That's when he came up behind me and he uh, hit me in the head with um, what I believe is a gun. And, and he hit me hard. I mean, he was coming for the kill. And I was petrified. So that was the same day Nipsey was murdered? Yes. When I heard that, you know, he, what he did to Nipsey, I realized that it was a gun that he used to hit me in the head for sure. You think that day he was psyching himself up to kill? Like he knew what he was doing? That day he definitely had these, it appears he had an agenda. It appears he had an agenda. If Eric did have an agenda, what was it? Eric's neighbor had never seen him be violent until that day. And I was hearing that even though Nipsey and Eric were both in the same gang, that gang has over 6,000 members and they didn't really know each other. So why would Eric turn up to Nipsey's store, angry and with two guns on him? There were numerous conspiracies, but all seemed convinced that Eric was just a hired gun and that someone else had ordered Nipsey's killing. But who? There was many, many conspiracies. A lot of people think LA police had to do something about it. You can't put nothing past the police in America, especially, you know, going after a black man, so. The police, they want to stop anybody from trying to make our neighborhood great again, you know what I mean? Not make America great again, but you know. When I was out and about in Crenshaw, I came across this newspaper. It's by a group called the Black Riders. And this newspaper edition is entirely dedicated to Nipsey Hussle. Yeah, so the, the statement on the inside sets out what they think happened that day Nipsey was killed. They say that the coward, traitor and snitch Eric Holder, who was most likely sent by the racist government, assassinated ruthlessly Nipsey Hussle. So they clearly believe that Nipsey was killed by the government for what he was saying. But I want to know why they think the government wanted him dead. What was Nipsey saying that was so controversial? The newspaper suggested Nipsey was teaching people to think differently, encouraging his community to work together to fight the oppression that was all around them. You know, this shit been going on for decades, and a lot of niggas, that mentality grew into cancer and killed them. And that's what my whole movement is about. The Black Riders think words like that made them a target but I want to know why. I'm meeting a sergeant of theirs in a covert location. Uh, we follow behind me, sir. We're going to go to the base. Uh, we're going to park next to me. He's going to take me to the group's leader. Right, yeah, you get a real sense being with them that, um, that these guys are being watched um, and they're very nervous. Like, we're not really allowed to film the man in the car. 
We're going to their base now, we can't film us entering. It's all very kind of tense. Ben. ben yeah. Sergeant EJ. Hey, sir. But we're trying to keep a low profile, not to call the scene or anything like that. Oh, really? Right. Do you think they're worried by you guys, the police? Yes. Power to the people. Damn. My name is General Taco. So Nipsey was a kind of, he was fully supporting your, your movement? Fully. Nipsey Hustle taught us F the police. He taught us F Donald Trump. No longer will we sit back passively and allow the racist U.S. government to continually oppress us. This ain't an American dream for black people. This is an American nightmare. Why would the government want to take Nipsey out? This was one day before he was going to create a gang truce in L.A. If a gang truce was established, there would be plenty of police. There would be plenty of lawyers. And all those who benefit from the criminal criminal justice system would be out of a job. It was plenty of people who wanted him dead, primarily the racist U.S. government. Had you heard of Eric Holder before this happened? No, I never heard of the traitor and the snitch. We have to understand and question two things. Was Eric Holder really a police informant? And the second thing is, was he a police informant on the payroll at the time that he murdered and assassinated and murdered out Nipsey Hussle? So you feel as though Eric Holder was acting on police orders? I think so, 120%. But why would Eric Holder want to do that? What, what's in it for him? It's like Malcolm X said. Just know they'll hire one of us to kill one of us just to say it was one of us. You know, I suppose, what is the evidence we can show? And it's going to be hard to do that because the government is trying to put a seal on all that information. It is just quite amazing how convinced he is that the government had a hand in this. The Black Riders were claiming that Nipsey's death was part of a long line of politically motivated killings of black men going against the status quo. Malcolm X. Martin Luther King. Fred Hampton. There's definitely a historical precedent of police and government agencies orchestrating the murders of countless uh, figures throughout black history. Uh, whether you're talking about Fred Hampton and the organization of the Chicago Police Department in Illinois um, to murder him. In the case of Nipsey Hussle, you saw that he was meeting with heads of state, that he was becoming very influential in the community around the youth. There will be a lot of people that did not want to see him uh, survive, that did not want to see him to continue on the trajectory that he was on because it was one of power, it was one of um, strength, and it was one of uniting a community. How can you believe that the cops are anything innocent in any of this, especially when we know the Attorney General is trying to shut down Slauson and Crenshaw, you know, so shut down the shopping center there. Um, the LAPD isn't necessarily known for being a friend. They're really known for trying to terrorize us. Nipsey's relationship with the police was strained. Videos shared online and testimony from the public told of tense interactions with the police. Nipsey was arrested at least 20 times in his life. The conspiracies involving the police seem to stem in part from an active investigation into Nipsey and his property that was uncovered at the time of his death.
The city attorney's office had been tracking Nipsey's property, alleging it was a hangout for the local gang, and that it was the site of attempted murders, shootings and robberies. <laughs> This is Nipsey's Marathon Clothing Store in 2018. An album launch party ended in a mass brawl. It was the kind of event the police were unhappy with. But from what I'd heard, Nipsey was just trying to run a legitimate business and trying to make the area better. Do you know where Vector 90 is? Vector 90? I want to know if there's a side to Nipsey I'm missing. This man might have the answer. In bringing justice to Nipsey's family. He's the local council member, Marquis Harris Dawson. Here he is with the mayor, the chief of the LAPD, and the police commissioner at the police press conference on Nipsey's murder. Hello. I'm meeting him in another one of Nipsey's businesses the Vector 90 co-working space. It's well known, I suppose, that the people of Crenshaw and the surrounding areas don't have the greatest relationship with the LAPD. Mm -hmm. um, did that spill over into Nipsey? Did he ever say to you he was having trouble with the police? Or? I never heard Nipsey grouse about the police. I've heard a lot of officers grouse about uh, Nipsey and so well, why does he get to have a business and why do people like him and you know why why is he looked up to in the community that kind of thing I mean isn't that a crazy question that a police officer is asking why should Nipsey be allowed to have a business like what does yeah. that even mean I think a lot of times there's the false expectation that uh, people who have been uh, the target of LAPD will never be on the side of owning a business I mean myself I, I always tell people I've had a gun pointed at me five times in my life Four times we were by police officers. Um, and now I'm on the city council and I get to vote on their budget and I get to vote on their mm. personnel policies. And so that's, this is, ha it's happening. I mean, did, did you know much about the investigation when it was taking place? Did you ever we, hear we, anything we, about we, it? We, we, were, we were tracking it. Um, and after this, this, the Sunday that Nipsey Hussle was shot, they were supposed the to day meet. After. The, the day after? Literally the day really? after they were set to meet, yes. I do think there, there were people intent on carrying out a vendetta against Nipsey Hussle and his family. Uh, I think those people are still around. I think that... Within uh, the LAPD? I think within the LAPD and beyond. The next stage from that, though, is that the LAPD had some involvement in his death. Usually there's some build-up or there's some logic or there's something that... Some pre-existing beef or something. Yeah, th like there's an argument, there's a something. Mm -hmm. In fairness to people who come up with things like that, this doesn't make any fucking sense. Who could have a vendetta against Nipsey Hussle? Nipsey Hussle was murdered and he was killed just before he was about to meet with city leaders and the LAPD about reducing gang violence. It was widely reported that Nipsey was scheduled to meet the LAPD the day after his killing. The police commissioner had even tweeted about it. But I'm hearing Nipsey's family aren't happy with the police for talking about this meeting. I want to know why. I've requested an interview with the LAPD and I finally get a call back. Hello? Hello. Uh, I think you call a lot of slack. We call a lot of slack from the family and you don't want to go down that road anymore. Why is it so yeah. bad? I don't understand. Like it. I, because, you know, the family was just, at that time, a toy cop, you know, and uh, LAPD made some statements, and um, from there, it just went downhill, so, and our boss don't want to make that make the mistake again, he just want to be involved. <laughs> so much of this story seemed to be about a lack of trust between the police and those around Nipsey. and the distrust was even within Nipsey's own gang. I've discovered from the transcripts at the pre-trial hearing that a conversation allegedly took place between Eric and Nipsey, moments before he was shot. Nipsey apparently accused Eric Holder of snitching, of working with the police. 
The word snitch is mentioned in the transcripts 24 times. I want to know once and for all, could Eric and the police really have been in on this together? Oh, hey. Hey, hey how you doing? Going? All right. Brian Bentley spent his whole career with the LAPD, working in Nipsey's neighborhood. Is that Nipsey? That's Nipsey. I mean, could the police have killed Nipsey Hussle? I don't think so, not at all. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Why, why do so many people think that they could have played the part then? I mean, I no, there's no trust. Uh, this community does not trust the LAPD, not at all. If anything happens, it's, they suspect the LAPD. Because there's this idea that Eric Holder was a police informant, he was working with the police in some capacity. I don't think LAPD had anything to do with it. Was there a value in terms of what um, Nipsey was doing that the police should recognize and maybe approach gangs differently in the sense of, you know, he was employing gang members? No, when police officers aren't gonna make a change. I mean, he was murdered. Um, and he was associating with felons and, and other gang members, and that's the outcome that all police officers envisioned, and that's what they that's what they expect, that anyone who's gang affiliated will die of a violent death, or they'll be incarcerated. So his story was not a success story; it ended the way that police officers expected it to end. Police officers come to this neighborhood so that they can arrest and incarcerate people. They're not there to, they're not social workers. They're there to, to arrest people, beat people, lock people up, plain and simple. Well, what do you think, how did Nipsey Hussle die? You know, he disrespected the person, which is, which is a big rule, you don't disrespect somebody. In the, disrespected in what sense? Uh, in the sense that he talked down to him and he was making accusations about him. The guy was upset and he came back and he shot him, which is not uncommon. You don't disrespect people. And um, if you do, you, you better be ready to, uh, you know, to defend yourself. You say that so nonchalantly, is that just like the law of the streets? Is is, that's the law of the streets. It's the law of, of how gang members work. Nipsey was a complicated character. He was a hero to his community. But in the past, he'd been called out over homophobic comments. He was also a known gang member, and he'd had numerous run-ins with the law. It seems he was always expected to live by the rules and regulations of the gang he pledged allegiance to. Y'all thought you was a cool guy. You thought wrong, bro. You don't put no camera in no grown man's face without asking. But you're a celebrity. Man, I'm a 60 crip, bro, first. Okay. All right, so learn about that, my okay. nigga. Okay, oh, okay. And I've been to jail. That don't threaten me, bro. Trust okay. me. If I had a bad day, I'd have tested your jaw. Brian had told me Nipsey was killed due to the law of the streets. What were these laws? I've managed to find some original gangsters from a local gang. I want to know more about the rules they have to live by. Nice to meet you. All right, Cedric. I'm Ben. This is your shop? Yes, it is. It's a bookstore, I'm guessing, from the... Um... Bookstore herbs. It's an interesting mix. It's the books and the herbs. So this neighborhood then, so you were saying this... So this is the eight trays? Yeah. What would happen if you said you were not from eight tray gangsters anymore? Ah, uh, man, I have to leave this city. Really? My own homies would beat me down. Melvin, would you beat him down if he said he wasn't eight tray gangsters anymore? Like... No, but, uh... uh... He wouldn't be involved in a trade business anymore. He'd be uh, basically exiled from the life he lives. So I can't stop him if they say, we got the DP Cedric. What does DP mean? You got to get disciplined. That's what DP mean. Oh, really? And that's usually three minutes. So you beat him up for three minutes? Three minutes about three guys. You handling your business. If you win, you lose. If you're on the ground, you ain't. After the three minutes, it's over with. All y'all hug and shake hands. Those rules. Do all gang members have to kill somebody? Hell yeah. Really? That's what make you a gang member. 
In terms of gang rules, you know, is calling someone a snitch a bad thing? This is the worst thing you could say because you, you that's you, a pretty bad statement. That's a bitter bad statement if you know you cowered out. Do you have to defend yourself if someone says that? You gotta go kill that nigga, man. I'm killing you. You call me a snitch, and I ain't a snitch. It's the equivalent of being called a child molester. Yeah. That's the level that's on. There's loads of conspiracies around Nipsey's death. You know, maybe the government did it, the police did it, somebody ordered the hit. Do you think they're all just a load of? Nipsey was stupid. How come? He was stupid. He didn't have his 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 gang didn't protect him and they wasn't gonna protect him when he got that money. I would have never had a shop with Slauson in, in, in Crenshaw if I was him. You would have just left? I would have just left. What you think is once you've got that money, once you've got that name? Just leave. It's too risky. Yeah, it's too risky. It's too many dudes that ain't gonna like you. You only helping Melvin and, and, and Jack? Nah, man. Don't work like that. You gotta help everybody. We all one. It's a lot of pressure, isn't it's it? It's a lot of pressure. Nipsey, for one, he should have never been at that store without security. But he felt comfortable. Oh, my homies ain't gonna do nothing to me. I'm Nipsey Hussle. And none of his homies shot back. They didn't like him. His success was great, but it was just too many haters. You're not untouchable, bruh. He thought he was untouchable. It ain't no, hey, let me get a handshake. Let me, nah, man. Bah, bah. You violated the rules. I don't care who you rapping for, what the world like about Nipsey. I killed you, bruh. You forgot? <laughs> All signs were pointing to a disagreement within Nipsey's gang. But Eric Holder was a low-level gang member, and Nipsey was one of the most powerful people in the community. I got respect in a hundred sets. Too many chains need another chest. It didn't make sense. If Nipsey had broken the rules, why would such a no-name kill him? There had to be other people at the top of the food chain who were also involved. But finding out who that was would be difficult. I'd just learned how dangerous it was to snitch. You know, you have rules and regulations about keeping your mouth shut. If enemies catch you, don't name, rank, and serial number. The machine is more important than the individual. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the bottom line. And I take no pride in saying that, but I did go to jail for first-degree murder. It's different shit. Different gang culture, in a, in a lot of ways, is just black culture. Shit, just, we locked out of so many systems where we could be important in the world, so we created our own system. And it kind of like, you know, to, to a lot of people, it might be on a low level, but it's still like satisfy the seven human needs, being important, significant. They say that the gangs are like Black Panthers without the political head, meaning that without the political background and ideology taken away from them, then you have, you're left with the shell of what could potentially be a, a law enforcement agency or protection agency for the community. I've received an email from an anonymous LAPD officer. The email told me to look into the big guy in this interview. And I had knocked out a, a dude's eye, so his eye came out. And it was what do you mean eye? His, 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 his whole eye came out? His whole eye came out. God damn! The big guy is Big U, or Eugene Henley. I'm hearing he's one of the most powerful people in Nipsey's gang. He was also Nipsey's ex-manager. I got so much flack about trying to push Nipsey at the time. Why? I don't know, dude's like, I mean, I heard everything. He, too much like Snoop, um, the crib, he's a crib, nobody gonna wanna hear that. I mean, it was all kind of stuff, I heard everything. Big Q was with Nipsey from the beginning. Homie just walked in, y'all know, Night Gorilla's on deck. Here he is on the release of Nipsey's first album. But I'd heard there'd been trouble in the past. Apparently, there had been a shootout between the two in 2011. There was speculation of jealousy and money issues.
What do you think the truth of the matter is? People know the truth, but um, I mean, sometimes, you know, you can't, they can't really say the truth or, you know, but honestly, just, it's like a secret society. Are you saying that someone other than the police and Eric yeah. Holder yeah. orchestrated Are, gonna this? Get, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's a lot more people involved. What does that mean? <laughs> You're not a part of the secret society. <laughs> That's what it means. <laughs> You're yeah. not a part of the secret society. Yeah, but it's not as it seems. Nah. Because out of the kind of conspiracies, I suppose, there was jealousy with Eric Holder. He there's jealousy him. with everybody, and you then, know? And then there's the police did it, which kind of seems potentially right. far-fetched, I don't know. But yeah. Maybe. And then there's that big you did it, his kind of old manager. Yeah, and nothing happens unless there's permission, there's, you know, an okay there, so I and just... And is big you big enough to do that? He has the, the name, he has the means, so, I mean, makes sense. He's not the only person with money, though, you know? He's not the only person who has, you know, the reputation, but at the end of the day... Why would somebody of that ilk do something like that? They don't like when they're not in charge anymore. Or, you know, when the younger people aren't following them anymore and they're following you now, or, you know, even Nipsey now. You know, they don't like that, so it's like... And you could die for that? Yeah, you could absolutely die for that. I mean, if the right person is jealous enough, Throughout the making of this documentary, uh, everyone keeps saying to me that they know the truth, but they can't really tell me because I'm not, you know, a gang member. I don't know the codes of the streets. I tried to contact Nipsey's former manager, Big U, countless times, hoping to arrange an interview. He refused. But I did find this Instagram video online. Got a text message going out. They created talking about my name and this dude, Eric Holden. And look at this text message. Well, I ain't killed Nipsey and had nothing to do with it because I wouldn't have benefited from Nipsey. I create my own, I do my own, and I created Nipsey. Check your stats, silly ass niggas. Stand here. Maybe I'm a like this. Man. Okay. His legacy going forward is gonna continue to grow and build. I look at it kind of like 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 a Tupac. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like that. Like real legendary is never gonna die. His main thing I would say he remembered by, by just being positive, just being a regular human being. Well, if there's a change that can be made, don't look for change, you be the change. Hopefully when I get like rich or something, I want to own up a, like own a plaza, like for real, have my homies working for me and stuff like that. Like, but man, there ain't gonna be another Nipsey, like, swear. Long live neighborhood Nips.